Hi, this is Brian Fogarty, and this is a video for Chapter 5 of the book Quantitative Social Science Data with R, the second edition. So in this video, what we're going to do is look at uh, a few examples of uh, variables to figure out the level of, of measurement. Um, so levels of measurement, th this is the, the nominal ordinal interval ratio. Um, often it seems super boring. <laughs> and super just like, oh, this is kind of dumb. Uh, but it's actually super, super, super important because it will affect what types of statistical analysis we can do. Um, that will become clear when we get to looking at different types of regression models. All right, so uh, let's get started here. We're just gonna do a few, few examples. Um, so I've opened up a R markdown file, um, and I set my library path and working directory and put in the R markdown section header, the hashtag pound sign. All right, so we are going to use a data set that is from 2019 as a survey of um, um, English people's perceptions of voter fraud. It's just really kind of like a small version of, of what the data actually is. Okay, so the file is a, a CSV file. So uh, before we do that, we're going to load the tidyverse package. So library tidyverse. And again, when this loads, it gives you all this information. If you remember uh, from previous videos that we've done. Okay, so I'm going to call this, I'm going to save the data as an object called VF England. Right, VF stand using to stand for voter fraud. And again, it's a CSV file, so it's read underscore CSV. Um, and the name of the file itself is VF England and then dot CSV. Um, again, when, when we read data in like this, the, this data set needs to be in our working directory that we set up here. If it's not, then it's not going to work. Okay, so let's read that in. All right, so we see how, uh, the information comes up here. We have 2,034 observations and eight variables. Let's take a quick look at this. We're gonna do glimpse VF England. Okay, so we have a handful of variables we'll, we'll get into, um, but everything looks looks right. Alrighty. Okay. So how do we determine level of measurement? So essentially we just look at the variable. So sometimes we need to look at the, the code book to see how it's ordered, especially if um, it's not labeled, like the values are not labeled, then, then um, we might need to look. Okay. So the first one let's look at is um, we're going to look at Brexit vote. So this is how people voted in the 2016 UK referendum, um, the Brexit referendum. There's sort of different names for it. I can never remember the exact official name, um, but let, let's see how um, how that looks. So we're going to do VF England, and we're going to use piping, and we're going to use the count function that we looked at in the last chapter. So it's Brexit underscore vote. All right, so we see here we have two values and missing values are NA. All right, so we have um, one remain to leave. So for the Brexit vote, remain uh, means the UK should should stay part um, part of the EU, even though it wasn't totally part of the EU. Um, and then the second one is, is leave. Uh, so the UK should leave, which the UK uh, did. All right, so... And this exercise what we're doing is trying to figure out what is the level of measurement. So here's, there's two values. So, so um, the sort of, you know, simple way of thinking about this is that if, if there's two values, then it's nominal. It's always nominal. Um, there is some sort of weird argument that if it's a dummy variable, zero, one, it could be actually um, interval, but we're going to ignore that for, for our purposes. Okay. Let's look at a second example. Um, let's look at uh, education. 
So this is the respondents in the survey education level. So we're going to do uh, VF England piping and education. All right, so we see here that it says one, two, three. <laughs> okay, so intuitively, we would expect that if the variable is about education level, that the higher levels means higher education level. Um, so we're most likely right, and if we check the code book, that is the case. All right, um, this is just a simplified version of, of education. So because there's three values, there's order to it, we consider this an ordinal variable. All right, um, the last example I wanna look at here, just in this, in this uh, short video, is a VF problem. So we're gonna do, um, VF England, again, piping, count, and then VF problem. So this variable, uh, th this is from a question asking whether people think that voter fraud is a problem in UK elections. Okay, so we see here there's seven values to it. Um, these are agree, disagree. Okay, so we're looking at this. So our first thought, okay, so it's agree, disagree, and there's strengths to it. So slightly agree, strongly agree. Um, so, so there should be order to it. The problem here for us uh, with how this is composed is that there's no order to these values currently because by default, uh, when the data is read in, uh, if, there's, if there's labels attached, so if there's these, these character labels, they're ordered alphabetically. So you can see it goes agree, disagree, neither, right? You can see that it's, it's ordered alphabetically. So given that, there's actually no order to this. So technically this variable is a nominal variable because there's no order. Um, what we would do is we would recode this, which we'll, we'll do later um, in, in this chapter, in chapter five here in, in a video. But we would recode this to, to give it the order, to go from strongly disagree to strongly agree. So then there's an order to it, and um, um, we, we would consider it then an ordinal level variable. All right, um, probably the last thing I'll say about levels of measurement is that um, usually with survey data, we just really have nominal or ordinal level variables. Um, sometimes we have interval ratio specifically uh, if there's feeling thermometers, but usually sort of nominal and ordinal make up most of them. Um, all right, so again, this is just a couple examples. You kind of just have to get the knack of like what the level of measurement is. And again, it doesn't, it might seem like it doesn't matter that much or it doesn't, you know, who cares, but it does affect the type of analysis we can do. So it, it does matter, it actually does matter. All right, so that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.